let's talk about full stack dev. I know that we are like very stereotypical, the full stack guys, in the sense that we're web devs that discovered backends a thing that we can do with JavaScript. But I think that the stereotype of full stack, sorry, jack of all trades, master of none is a little disingenuous and incredibly unfair. I think that when we say full stack devs aren't as good at backend or even aren't as good at front end, we are thinking about backend, front end, and full stack in different terms. And often, like if one person's a full stack dev and the other's a backend dev, it's going to be really hard for them to, I hate to say it this way, but respect each other because the word backend means something different to both of them. So I think to, to have a good conversation about full stack development and what it means to be a full stack developer, we first have to start with a system that we can define things with and agree upon. So as always, we're going to go straight into Excalibur. The easy way to think of this is a spectrum, where on one side here, we have a computer. We can even say like computer hardware. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have a user. So the question is, what are the things in between? So at some point here, you're going to have your like designer and your designer is the person who creates like the mocks and works with the user perhaps directly even to make a design that's as good as possible for the user then you might have not too far down the line your front end dev it honestly be fairer to move these guys slightly and put your like product person Actually, I'm going to change the layout of this slightly and put all of these on one line or one side like this and space them out a bit more. You'll see why in a bit. Move these over. Move this to the middle. Back end. Dev. Infra person. Hardware person. So the reason that I split it up this way is I would argue none of these specific roles are necessarily a real thing. I think reality tends to be a little messier and people exist in spectrums. So a designer might work with product a lot. Maybe a designer works so much with product that they often find themselves like working with users directly. Maybe your front end developer is working with the back end devs a lot and makes changes in back end dev somewhat often, but also works with the designers very directly too. This could be one definition of full stack. But what about the backend dev? What do they think is backend development? The backend developer might think of themselves as, or might think of backend as starting here and going all the way down to here, or they might think of it as stopping here, or they might go to about there because they consider part of backend to be an infra person. So if this is your definition of backend and the alternative a definition for a full stack dev that lives here is more like this, then yeah, to the back end person, you're not a real back end developer. You just exist a little bit in the overlap here. To a full time back end person where this whole box is their life, saying that just this section is back end is very upsetting to them because to them, as a back end developer, this goes so much deeper. But to us often, as a full stack developer, you don't have to think as much about those things, about the infrastructure, about the hardware it runs on. Your job as a full stack developer is to build something that maybe matches the design. Maybe you even design it yourself and you're, you don't have a product manager and you're talking to your users directly. This is one definition of full stack developer as well. This is one that we see pretty often. And to me, it feels incredibly unfair to point at this box here and say that this person will never be as good at backend or front-end dev because it's a failure to acknowledge what they're actually doing, which is bridging a massive gap all the way from backend dev to the user. This is a different thing. It's like a horizontal versus vertical. Like You could argue that there's depth here too, that this goes way deeper, and that the full stack dev doesn't have the same depth to their experience in these sections. Those are all fair arguments. They just kind of bore me. 
because they're not about how we deliver value to users with the things that we built. And I think that the jack of all trades, master of none argument is to an extent a cope, but more than anything, it's a miscommunication where this shared space isn't acknowledged by either side as the problem. But at the same time, someone who spends all of their time here to here doesn't necessarily not know about this space too. Like I personally came from backend and did a decent bit of infra in my time. And I also used to build a lot of systems and did all sorts of crazy things with hardware. I don't do that anymore. So my knowledge here is old. I think I'd almost like put it red. But this is still experience I've had and it's still a conversation I can entertain. Sometimes when I have those conversations, it pisses people off, but I can still have them. The, the reality is a really cool thing was invented that lives right here called Lambda. And because of Lambda, I don't need to think too much further than this line down. I've made the decision that the compromise that AWS Lambda makes with, I could also rename this serverless, but because of serverless, my line can stop here and I'm not compromising a whole lot. At a certain point, that will become expensive and running on serverless infrastructure would be more expensive than paying a person who can do everything below this line. But I'd rather not think about what's below this line right now. I've made a choice because of what I know is past here to not do all of that. It's all about the compromises that you're choosing to make. And I think it's unfair to say someone in my position who's done things past this line doesn't know about things past that line because they've chosen to draw it. My decision to draw this line is not one made out of fear or one out of lack of competence below this line. It's out of business need and focus and the things we are trying to deliver on. As a company, we're delivering features for users and we have money in the bank. And we don't want to spend that money on a bunch of developers working on a thing that might not end up working for our users. And if we can draw a line like this, we should. You can even argue that for some products, like let's say you're building infrastructure that is for developers. Like you're, rather than making like a traditional user facing like media product, you're making something like, um, like AWS. Let's say you are making the new AWS. Because of that, you care a lot about the actual hardware and things you're running on, but maybe the in, the interface and the quality of like what you're interfacing with there isn't important. And you discover Retool or React Admin. That will let you bridge this gap. And now you can stop here and go straight to your user because your user is going to consume an API anyways. You don't have to worry about the things beyond that line. And if your job is working at AWS, that's where your concern pretty much stops. And I would still call you a full stack dev if you're def making a UI and plugging things into it. It's just your full stack goes a lot further in that direction and you've drawn a different line here. The person who does that might be a React expert that has decided to move into more infra stuff. I know a handful of people where that's the case, where they started as front end devs living over here and then ended up in something like this. Totally fine. Like I, I want to emphasize that it is totally understandable and arguably the same exact thing to draw a line in the other direction. The important piece here is none of these things have good definitions because this is a full stack dev. This, oh, shoot. This is a full stack dev too. This is a full stack dev. This is a full stack dev. Like all of these are full stack devs because they overlap on the back end and the front end. And sadly enough, the definition of full stack is basically that you cover this range. Not even the whole thing, but like a very rough, like that's the definition of full stack, but your job extends further each direction. When I call myself a front end dev, I am expecting to work with designers a lot more. When I call myself a backend dev, I'm expecting to work with infra a lot more. When I call myself a full stack dev, I'm not expecting necessarily to work with either. I might be, but it's a very, very poor 
term in that sense where it doesn't imply a boundary of any form. Whereas back end and front end imply one of the lines. They say, I am not going past here. And front end says, I'm not going past here. I think that's the point of confusion that makes these conversations so hard is once that line is drawn, there's an implicit assumption that everything on the other side exists. And I don't like that assumption because for some backend developers, they stop here. They don't even go into infra. They might just be a backend dev that only does Lambda functions. And at that point, I'm as backend as they are, but they're implying that backend goes all the way down here. Full stack might go all the way down there as well. So yeah, full stack's cool. It just means you cover that range. Generally speaking, the coolest people and the developers I seek and try to like promote, and honestly, the things I'm pushing here, it's my goal that all of y'all can build anything you want to build from scratch. So if you have an idea, you have a thing, you have an app you want to build, all of the parts you need to do that make enough sense for you to do that. There isn't really a term for that because full stack is kind of narrow in its definition, but we're going to go with builders. I'm trying to make a community of builders, people who want to create things from scratch for users. And that can be an entirely different focus depending on the thing that you're trying to do. You might end up spending all your time in infra. You might spend end up spending all your time in Figma. But if the result is a complete application that users can use to solve problems, I don't really care what you call yourself. The problem with the terms like front end and back end is that those are the only places you can live where you can't actually finish a thing. So I like the term full stack mostly because it means you can build something yourself. But what I would prefer is if we start to think of ourselves as builders instead. Thank you for the time. I hope this is helpful as we continue forever having the full stack debate. I really just think we need better terms and I'm probably not gonna talk about this too much anymore for that reason. Just go build shit. That's what we're here to do. I really don't care what you're using to do it. Just make cool things and call yourself what you wanna call yourself from there. Hey. Did you know that over half my viewers haven't subscribed yet? That's insane. Y'all just click these videos and listen to me shout and hope that the algorithm is gonna show you the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, maybe even the bell next to it so that you know when I'm posting videos. Also, if you didn't know this, almost all of my content is live streamed on Twitch while I'm making it. Everything on the YouTube is cuts, clips, whatever from my Twitch show. So if you're not already watching, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash Theo, where I'm live every Wednesday around 2 or 3 p.m. And I go live on Fridays pretty often as well. Thank you again for watching this video. Really excited. Thank you.